Okay, everyone. So I am super excited and lucky. This is Jax, and I'm sitting down with our favorite Ruth Hill. That's why you're here. Now, Ruth is used to being on the asking end of all the questions, so much so that when I said to her, can we please do this? People want to know about you. Um, you were so gracious that you accepted this invitation, but I don't think you're as comfortable answering the questions as you are asking them. So a lot of people want to know about you. So thank you for agreeing to do this today, Ruth. Jax, I'm so happy you asked me. And, and it's interesting saying that because there was really the time period um, where I would have said like that I'm really it's really uncomfortable but at this point in my life it's actually quite an honor and I'm really excited to be able to have somebody that wants to interview me and I really do love getting the chance to talk about myself I've, I've, I've really learned a lot especially over the last year or so um, and so I'm I'm really good I, I'm it's not where I'm used to being, but now I really enjoy getting the chance to be able to answer questions and not just ask them. Well, I love the way you put that and that I feel like I've seen from the perspective of one, being lucky enough to be your friend, but also just existing in this wonderful space with you where our not only our career aspirations, but our passions are closely aligned. I've gotten to see you really thrive in different ways over the last year and a half, whether that be performing or the new role you've taken on as an executive assistant or when, it, when okay. we've talked about hosting and a variety of things, you are so good at balancing all of that along with being an amazing mom and daughter. So I just have to say all that up at the top. Well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. Um, it's, it's been really quite an incredible year, year and a half, uh, getting close to two years now, getting, you know, that where I've really begun to transform and a lot of things have been happening um because now my daughter's in college so that's been and that's just a very recent thing doing incredibly well um she's been I think it's been two weeks maybe now in college and and she just is she just is doing a great job and and then just with all the opportunities that have come my way um it's been and with all of that just there's been a lot of personal not just professional transformation but a lot of personal transformation going on and it's been incredible to see that uh, it's been said that who I am now is unrecognizable to the person that I was a year ago I've had many people tell me that well and I want to dive into that a little bit more but if you don't mind I want to go back a little further and even though I'm lucky enough to know you on a friendship level, uh, not everyone is. And I want everyone to get to know you and at least have a little bit of a sneak peek into the life of Ruth Bell. So if we could take it back a little bit, I want to know what you were like when you were a little girl. Well, it's, it's really interesting that you asked me that because um really what I'm doing now was the fulfillment of the dream that I had as a little girl um I didn't understand it all at that age um growing up I was very sheltered um I grew up I, I live in Washington State so I'm from Washington State from Tacoma Washington and very sheltered nice loving family um, there, there were some issues because my parents actually did divorce and then got remarried. And so that's always an interesting story. That's, that's a whole nother story. And I have an older brother 
And can I just, actually um, yeah. can I actually ask a question about that? How yeah. long were they divorced for? They were divorced for about two or three years, and then miraculously came back together. I, it was and and it was so cool because my brother and I actually got to be in their remarriage ceremony. I I was. I was only in um, first grade at that time. And I thought, oh, I get to be my parents' flower girl. I just thought that was a normal thing. In my mind, <laughs> I didn't understand that this didn't <laughs> normally happen. And and so I, was just, I just thought, oh, this is great. My brother was the best man. And I just thought, oh, this is normal. Because I didn't know any different. But it was uh, truly an amazing amazing story the way it all happened and they have been back together now since well they they've been back together i mean they've been married for over 50 for, for over 50 years now so um it's just incredible i love that and i think that that is such a unique and beautiful story and that it shows that if we are open to receiving that kind of grace and love yeah. that nothing is ever going to be perfect but to keep an open mind and an open heart and also I just pictured being kind of funny you and your brother thinking that the parent trap actually worked when you guys <laughs> <laughs> right yeah well we, we didn't really do anything I mean we were we weren't doing the stuff that those girls did but I, I know it 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 is a cool story that does not always happen I do hear of instances of it happening but it's a really cool story the way every, everything came about and so 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 but that was that was really so my childhood growing up um I was very much a very good student I was very much into music I took piano lessons I liked to sing but I always did have this keen interest in especially old movies and tv I wasn't really interested in the modern stuff and old music. I, I mean, that was my thing. I was really interested in stuff from like the 1930s and 40s and 50s. And I would read biographies of all these different actors. And, and I was really, really into it. I used to go to the library and search search through the old catalog, the old library catalogs. And you had those, they weren't digital, digital or anything. And you had to, and I would put, I would request these books and I would be reading loads of books on, on after, I mean, I love Judy Garland and Bing Crosby and, and Cary Grant and Gene Kelly and all of these. And I loved musicals. I absolutely obsessed with musicals. I mean, I would, I, I think I've watched Sound of Music at this point, probably 50, 60 times. I don't know. I mean, I have them all. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I have the, I would watch them and I have them memorized and I just, I loved it and I just had this dream and I didn't understand it as a child, but I was like, I want to work with actors. I didn't really want to be an actor, but I wanted to work with actors and I didn't understand how that would work. I didn't have a clue, but uh, it was one of those dreams that I kind of held off um, and, and just didn't know if it would ever come about. I, I don't know if I ever quite let it go it's one of those things you start growing up, you think, oh, this is never going to happen. But, um, but uh, so and I usually kept to myself. I was a really good student. I was, I didn't give my parents any issues really when I was growing up. Uh, we, we always went to church. We were always a church going family. So church was a, was a very, very strong part of, of our growing up and, and, and music was huge. Um, I was in, I got into singing. I was obsessed with the singer Sandy Patty, as a matter of fact. I don't know if you, you I'm mm -hmm. absolutely obsessed with her. I wanted to be the next Sandy Patty. That was my, that was what I wanted. And um, so I finally took voice lessons and that, and I actually did go off to college and, and studied, studied voice. That was my, that was my. Well, first of all, I want to say that now that you've been getting back into singing more, or I don't know if it's back into it more, if you're just sharing it more with everyone, sharing this gift that you have, it has been so wonderful to see this transformation. So hearkening back to that now, 
over the last year and a half, what sparked this transformation? What do you feel like is happening inside of you? And how do you see that manifesting in your daily life? Really good questions, Jeff. Wow, that's really good. Um, well, I've been interviewed by Ruth Hill. I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really good. Um, so as far as what sparked it, so um, I, I had gotten into interviewing actors and I had a blog and I was back writing, but I was also a substitute teacher. And I really did believe that one day I would be back in the classroom. I had been a music teacher for many years. I believe that was, that was where I really thought I would be. But then I started to get wrapped up in the interviewing and the writing and thinking, how can I make a career of this? And I wasn't really sure where that was going to be headed. And really what, what sparked things, I would say, first of all, um, it, I, I, mean, I have to go back to the whole pandemic. Um, I was, my last day of substitute teaching was the day that school was closed for the pandemic. They had not made the announcement, the official announcement. And, you know, we thought at that point, oh, we'll be back in six weeks. It'll all be okay. We'll be back in six weeks. And, and we weren't, of course. But... I remember that that was an unusual moment because here I was a substitute teacher and I was trying to calm down seniors who were worried that they weren't able to graduate and how that was going to work. And here I am, like, I don't even know, it was a crazy time, but I will never forget that day as long as I live. And for me, that was a day that things began to change and I didn't even know they were going to be changing. Um, it was shortly thereafter that... Um, Paul Green and his fiance Kate Austin, they have an online course that they take a group of people through. And I had been, I'd been, I, they had offered it the year previously and I had taken it. I'd taken it actually twice. And I was on the fence with a lot of things. It, they'd helped me. Not that they hadn't. Um, I had been good friends with Paul for some time. I'd had the chance to interact with Kate and, and, so uh, I had taken the course, but I was more of a spectator. And if there was something that, especially that Paul would say that I disagreed with, I'd just be quiet and I'd look it up and I'd say, nope, he's wrong. And this is why. And I don't have to say anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't call it. I just was, I was kind of out to like, well, he can't be right. And I'm not going to do what he, I'm just going to take the stuff that I would like from the program and reject the rest of it. Well, they were offering it now for the third time. And since it was staying home, you know, the pandemic, you're stuck at home. We were still in quarantine at this point and not going out hardly at all. And I thought, well, this is my opportunity to redeem myself. That was what I actually thought I was doing. And I thought, I'm going to throw myself in and I'm going to try everything in this program and not just take the parts that I like. And so I signed up. I got a lot of other people to sign up and then um, the day it starts, uh, Paul had asked me to come on to help with, with there's a Facebook group attached to the course and he'd help me, you know, if, if, I, I mean, if I could help them with being admin and letting people in and all this. And I'm like, oh, sure, sure. I'd love to do that. And then literally I'm come, we're driving home from church because our church had opened up. Um, back at that point um, and my mom said well I want to join and I'm like whoa you want to join you want to <laughs> join the course the course starts today mom do you have any idea what you're about to to get in on this and, and I tried to talk her out of it I really did I, like, I don't know mom if you're gonna like this this may not be what you really want but she was committed and I told Paul and Kate, and they're like, oh yeah, sure. So, you know, and, and so she got signed up and here we both were taking this course now. I was taking it for the third time. She was taking it for the first time. And this course is all about health. It's, 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 a, it's an online you know, lifestyle coaching class course, I'd say. Um, but they deal with the mind, body, and connection. And they really... 
uh, Kate usually does the mind, Paul does the body, and then together they'll do connection. And, and so I was diving in, but the next thing I know, my mom is diving in faster than I am. She's jumping in. She's, she's doing all these things. Before I know it, she's drinking celery juice. I'm like, mom, I was going to suggest we drink celery juice, but what were, you're already going to drink celery juice. And she's walking and it's like, what? And I'm like, my goodness, I got to like get with the program here. She's showing me up. She, I can't have my mom <laughs> showing me up. <laughs> and, and it was, and it was, so it was a really healthy, it, it was the way that it should be that it wasn't like we were in competition with each other but we were spurring each other on you know there were times where she didn't really want to do something but I'd do it and so then she'd do it and then I didn't really want to do something but she did and so that now for for me as I began to really step into leadership which I really did with Facebook group I did a lot with Facebook group that really began to spark this change as I, as I became very open. I had decided, I'd made the decision I was going to be open. I didn't like, there were a lot of difficult things to, to go through in that particular time when I took the course because I had to face a lot of things in my past. I had been through a divorce. I had to deal with some issues surrounding that. And there were some old stories that I told myself for so long and that I had to get rid of and to, and it was a very long process and lots of, lots of tears, lots of not wanting to do it and working through things. But um, it was, it was something through all that, it, it sparked all these all these changes and they were changes that that yeah I had to do something to push it to, to push it forward and to and to, I couldn't just sit there and say oh that's nice and just let it happen to me but I had to get out and really go for it and it was so worthwhile because physically and emotionally and even my relationship everything began to work as I had never seen it before well, first of all, it's just so exciting to hear all that because mm -hmm. we've seen that in you. And what would you say, people that know you, both people you're very, very close to, and then people who know you, whether it's through um, the Hallmark community and beyond, because I feel like you've started to make a name for yourself that is way beyond the Hallmark community, which is huge in and of itself, you've created an empire for yourself. And I think what is so amazing about that is sometimes as some people hear creating an empire, it sounds like this really intense thing or this thing that could be really self-indulgent. But with you, it's not at all because you are someone who, to me, is always putting other people at the center of things while also being able to shine with your own light. There's a wonderful balance there. Mm -hmm. And what would you say that other people have noticed about you the most? What is the most common comment that you get now about how you've changed, even if it's something little or kind of funny? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, I, I, I think that probably being much more open and much more authentic. In other words, I'm, I'm open to trying a lot more new things, even if there, I've, I've had to step out and do things that were way out of my comfort zone. And those were things I didn't like doing always when um, it, you know, I, I was one who always liked challenges, but they were challenges where I was still somewhat in control, you know, kind of like I could kind of control it. I've been able to step out and be much more open to new experiences, thinking of something new, trying something new, trying, I mean, a, a, a really good example of that is since I, 
and I know we'll probably get a little bit further in on this possibly, but I'll throw this in now, is um, since I am an executive, my, the executive assistant Paul Green, I said, I, I told him several months ago, we need to redo your website. And we looked at hiring people and all this. And, and I just kept thinking, man, you're going to pay all that money. And I've never redesigned a website. I mean, I knew a little bit of it with my website. But I just said, well, let, why don't you let me just jump in and try it? And I, it's like, I didn't know what I was doing in many ways. I mean, I just had about this much experience, you know, just a little bit. And and here I am redesigning his website. And he's like, yeah, go for it. And he let me run with it. And now when it's it's honestly become this source of you know, great pride, even for him, that he can show off this website that I've created really from where it was and 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 that was really stepping out I never would have done that I would have just stayed in my corner and said okay yeah find somebody else to do it because I've never done that before and I don't think I can do it when in the back of my mind I would have been saying well of course I could do it but I might mess up here or I might mess up there and and so that then being being very open to try new things open to making mistakes and realizing that making a mistake is not the end of the world, that actually by making a mistake and by failing, by quote unquote failing, so it's really not failing, failing is when you give up, but by not making a mistake, mm, things, yes. things <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and so it is being much more willing to allow myself that opportunity to make the mistake and like okay I messed up here let's let's fix it over here you know we can we'll try it again the chance to do to see what why it didn't work and let's try it again and just being very authentic where it used to be I wanted to project this idea of Ruth is perfect Ruth does everything perfectly Ruth doesn't make mistakes Ruth is just, and, and it was very important for me to have that image out there. Now it is no longer important. Well, I want to be one that does a good job and does well. Um, it's not important for me to be perfect. In fact, actually, it, it, it can be a little bit annoying if somebody looks at my life and says, well, you're perfect and you never have any problems. It's like, you know, it's like, no, actually, do you have you have a few minutes and I'll tell you I'll tell you why it's not perfect and and that was something that in the past it would have been oh you think I'm perfect oh that's good I'm so glad you think I'm perfect but but Paul Green said something to me cut for, it was it would have been sometime last year that it stuck with me as he said being perfect is overrated like nobody mm. really wants to, nobody wants to be perfect. I mean, you think you want to be perfect, but when you go around and you see people who are quote unquote perfect, I think that it, it can be a turnoff. Like, because it's like, well, that person's perfect. They're at this standard. They're way up here. Nobody can attain that. So it, it's, a, it's actually a turnoff and you don't even want to be around them. And I think that was actually who I was before. I can remember people saying to me, well, you just seem stuck up. I'd have people tell me I was stuck up and, or that I was prideful. And it's just like, what? That, like, that's not who I am. And I knew it wasn't, but what they were saying is they were saying that I'm putting out, I'm perfect. And so to them, that was, you know, that was the way that they were viewing it. That was their perception. I love the way you shared that because that insight is so incredible and in the fact that you're having this one experience of who you are and what you think you're putting out there. And it's being perceived in a very different way. And an interesting through line that I was hearing when you were talking was that before you were living in fear and now there's freedom. And it's so beautiful to be able to see you flourish in this way, because I think that 
And this is a question that I wanted to ask you, and then I want to circle back to what you do as an executive yeah. assistant. But what do you think it is about you? Because this is no surprise to anyone, but all of the actors, directors, writers you've interviewed, or anyone that I've talked to about you or within the community, we're serious about it, but it's also kind of a joke that it's like, well, you start talking to Ruth Hill, you, you can just tell Ruth Hill anything. Like you, you have a way about you that draws people out and makes them feel safe and taken care of. And you ask things in a way that lets people open up about who they are in a very authentic way. What do you think you do to do that? And is that something that is intentional or is that just how you are? Thank you for saying, saying all that. That's nice to hear. Um, I, I know I've I've heard that, but it's but I never get tired of hearing that. So I'm 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 glad because <laughs> that really is that really goes back to my perspective. First of all, I think it's mostly unintentional, but I think there is some intentionality there. I say that because when I began interviewing actors, writers, producers, whatever, uh, my perspective was that I had seen so much negativity out there. I mean, this is one of the reasons that I jumped in and said, I have to do something. I have to get my voice out there. I had read so many negative reviews and, thing, and just things that people would say, even in interviews, I've read interviews. It was like, I can't believe somebody asked that question or said that about this person. And and it just really bothered me because I felt like these people's perspective was, well, we're just going to go in and try to tear the movie apart. We're going to try to get the dirt on that person and see if we can make them say something they're not supposed to say. And I could just read that so clearly in their whole perspective. And it bothered me so much that I decided when I do this, my whole perspective is, Let's highlight this person, make it a positive experience, everything positive about them. Let's find out who they are beyond just being an actor and take them away from the celebrity status that, that, they're, that they might have. Maybe they don't have it, but a lot of them, a lot of these people have a celebrity status, at least in some groups. And let's find out who they really are and make it a place that also, if they tell me something, that then they later on come back and say, please don't print that, please don't say that. They always knew that I would hold to my word and, and I would not print that. And, and there are times where I, uh, with some of the younger actors, especially some of my favorite interviews, you guys didn't even see half of the interview because half the interview, um, and I'll just use Tyler Hines as a really great example. My first interview with him, the second, like half of the interview was, this is how you can be a successful Hallmark actor with the fans. <laughs> and, and I would, and, and he knows that he has no problem with me saying that because of course he's always talking about me too. But I would, I was always willing to share any insight whatsoever that I could to help them be better, whether it was on social media or with the fans or whatever the case was. And that was my perspective. That still is my perspective. And I always went in. There, there were times where maybe that particular actor was not in one of my one of my favorite movies. Maybe I could hardly even get through it. But I remembered their part. And I would always make it a point to say something positive about them. Let's not tear down the movie and rip it to shreds and and say how horrible this acting was or whatever the case was, that was never my perspective. It was always about let's find what's positive. And so that is mostly unintentional, but there is that part of intentionality that there were times where I would, where when I would be listening to an actor um, and they're talking and where I'd be, where I remember, okay, Ruth, let's get back and make sure that we're keeping this very positive because it could be very easy to even get into a complaining mode without meaning to 
interviews can turn into complaining as well. And not that actors would normally do that or writers would normally do that. I'm not putting anyone down. It's just you have this authentic conversation and you can start going down the road of negativity. It's like, well, I recognize that, but let's come back. You know, let's let's gently come back here. And that was that. So that was always something that I had in my mind when I was interviewing people. You know, I love that you're sharing that because I feel like my perspective on that is so similar in the fact that something that bothers me is that I do think that there is sometimes this notion that it is more difficult to be critical or have a critical eye or find the negative because it means that you are a discerning film watcher. And while I do think there is an absolute time and place for that, absolutely, yes. However, what you just touched on, I think is very important in the fact that even if there was a film that you weren't maybe keen on the whole thing, you are smart enough to pick that specific part that rang true for you. Now you're not gonna be inauthentic and just say, it was great because guess what? That kind of toxic positivity, positivity that is actually not positive because it's not real. There's no there there either. But when you say, I love when you did this line or when you had this moment or when you, even an actor who knows that maybe the movie itself or even their performance was not their best, that will ring true to them. And I've had this happen too, but you know, I'm an actor and I've had performances that have gone way off the rails. Mm -hmm. That if someone was just like, you were awesome, I'd be like, I mean, I wasn't. But then if someone says one specific thing that rings true, you almost take that to heart. And that is what is more difficult about what you are doing as opposed to just getting into this sort of negative fast. So thank you for sharing that perspective. I think it is very true. Um, I want to ask, so in terms of what you do as a journalist, we are able to at least have an idea of what that is because it's a little bit more front facing. I mean, of course we never will. And at some point, you know, down the road, we'll have time for an even longer interview, I hope. Mm -hmm. But we at least have an idea of, oh, she has to book the actors and then write the questions and then she transcribes it. it. We we know this, but for being an executive assistant, I think some people don't even know what that job entails. So could you fill us in a little bit about what that even is and what you do? <laughs> well, now that's, a, that, that's quite a loaded question, but it's a good one, a really good one. Um, it's, you know, it's really fascinating. Let me start by saying that, um, I'm currently in, I'm currently enrolled in a business marketing uh, course of study. I'm actually I've gone back uh, online online college, and so I'm going through business school. Is really what I'm doing. And what was really fascinating to me is as I'm in this business course, I actually talked about being an executive assistant, and so many people responded back with this idea of, well, we always thought an executive assistant was a follower, but the way you describe it, they're a leader. And they just completely transform this whole idea of being executive assistant that we, I, I think it's, it's out there. We don't always know what that entails and it's gonna change with depending on who you're working for. And so it was, that was really fascinating to me because when I was hired on, I don't really believe Paul Green or I, either one of us knew exactly what executive assistant meant. What he knew was he had 
20 projects or whatever that he wanted to do that he was not getting done. And he knew that I had organizational skills, or at least, you know, some from what he could tell, and that I could jump in and help him with these particular projects and help to get them actually done rather than just, he's the creative type that jumps around from, from thing to thing to thing. And, and, and so it was a little bit, it had been, it had been recommended by, by his mentors, you know, like you need some help, you know, you need some help here. Mm -hmm. And so he brought me on. And of course, I mean, I jumped at the chance. I, I was, um, at that point, the schools weren't opening back up and yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, if I can do this as a job, yeah, that'd be great. Cause I'd already been working, been volunteering my time quite a bit for, for him and for his fiance and the course. And, and just in general, I was like just trying to do as much as I possibly could to help promote his career. As we've gone through the past um, it's almost a year and a half that I've worked for him, um, it's, it's been really interesting to see what the job entails. So to try to explain what, the, what, what an executive assistant does so that, so that can be difficult to try to explain exactly what my role is. But professionally speaking, what I'm doing is I'm taking his 20 or so projects, which it is about 20, maybe it's 18, somewhere in there. I'm, I would have to look at the list. Wow. And, <laughs> and just different things. Some of them are small, some of them are much bigger. And my job really is become more to help build his brand. I'm actually becoming more of building a brand and it's, 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 it's more than just helping him, you know, keeping him organized and keeping him on track and, and making sure, you know, helping him out with his social media stuff and helping with the fans, those kinds of things, interacting with the fans, all those kinds of things I, I do as well as helping to actually promote his work to, um, give suggestions how can we do here i've done a lot of research into the marketing so i've done a lot with the marketing and it's a and really it's a matter of keeping him on track because he is so creative and that is where he is you know feels you know the most of course he's going to and a creative sort of person is going that that's not necessarily organized i mean he's organized in some things but not everything. And he will, of course, say this. I and mean, what I'm saying is nothing that he has never said. Um, and so my, what I get to do then is to take those projects and say, well, okay, let's, let's, what's our main focus? What are the three or four most important things we need to focus on? I'll look at his schedule, help him keep track of his schedule. It's a lot of interacting with the fans as well. And, and then it's also, I've, I've taken over writing his newsletters, blog posts, et cetera, really doing that for some doing it. keep it I keep his website together. And so it's it entails a lot. And I don't really say that I work 24-7 officially, but I do get requests at various times. And he's and he's very kind, understanding he's not demanding at all. So I'm really blessed in that. And he has allowed me a great deal of freedom to be able to take an idea and run with it and see if it works. And so it there's 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 a lot involved. So much of it I don't I don't even see as work. You know, when I have to try to figure out what I did that week and and turn in turn in a timesheet, you know, it, it could be, it could be difficult because I'll actually forget some of the things I've done for him because I just do all these things. A lot of these things I just do and, and I love doing them. And it's become that I'm so passionate about his brand and about what he is doing and his perspective and that I'm just always there to do whatever is needed and he has said many, many times that, you know, and he said it publicly, he doesn't know, how, 
he doesn't know how he got along without me because it's because I've become so much a part of what he's doing. You know, I love the way you shared that too, and the way that you put it, because I know several friends of mine that work as executive assistants for actors, which is very different, I think, than working as an executive assistant to someone who is maybe in a different field, because actors want an executive assistant who is also creative Mm -hmm. and understands what the industry is like is also maybe a part of the industry themselves, like with you being a journalist and being so deeply enmeshed in this world, both with the fact that if Paul is going to an event, all the people at this event already know you and know who you are and have a relationship with you that it's not this thing where I'm I'm sure he could hire a great many people that would be able to technically keep him organized and do a great job, but that very specific fit of being able to keep things organized, understanding just how incredible he is and Kate is and their cats are and and getting their lives and having those relationships, having your own genuine investment in who they are as people in addition to what they do and building the brand is something that cannot be, you don't, like you said, you don't even know what that is going into it. So hearing you talk about it is just so fascinating because I think some people don't even know what that world is. Now, before we close out, two last things I want to touch on. Um, You are an incredible mother to an incredible daughter that I have interacted with, not as much as I would like to, but Martha is amazing. What is it like being a mom? Oh, being a mom is something that is the greatest joy of my life. I, I mean, I could not, I could not have even imagined when if when I used to think about when I was growing up as, as a lot of girls have that thing of oh what would it be like to be a mom and do I want any kids you know for a while I was going to have you know 20 kids <laughs> and you know there was that time when I, I know when I was going to adopt all these kids I, mean, I had all these ideas I, I I was I had every you know I had all these ideas and and then um, the, the most, honestly, the most beautiful part of my marriage, I was married for 10 years. And the most beautiful part of that marriage was that we produced this amazing, this amazing uh, creation. And, and, um, and Martha has been such a joy and has taught me so much. And then she's been able to see my transformation and it has caused her to be, it's been so much fun to see her at college and for her to text me different things and and to see that that she's really stepping out and doing things that I never did at that age. And so it's just, it's just such a joy. And really she has become uh, a friend in so many senses. We are so close. Um, we're, we're, uh, I mean, I'll tell you, um, we are going, um, this coming summer, I actually got second row seats to Beetlejuice, the, the musical. Yes. And so, yeah, so we're, so in June, we're going to go and see that. And she has been, uh, actually, she has been my partner in going to see musicals and concerts and things since she was like, a year, you know, around a year old. I was take. I mean, I actually took her to musicals when she was just a year old, year too old, and she loved them. And and so she has been like my partner. It's like it doesn't even seem right to go out and go to things without her. Uh, it's like I can't even imagine. It's like I'm like, going to a movie without Martha would seem wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying I won't do it because of course I will, but it's just this thing of. She has been 
the one that will come along and watch things with me and and we went to our Taylor Swift concerts and we went to all of the programs when we were growing up or when she, she was growing up, I should say, you know, Barney and the Wiggles and Sesame Street, and all those things. I mean, I exposed her to so much and, and our relationship has been so open. I, I made the decision early on that I would never push her to do anything. I didn't want to push her into music and, you know, then she, she went into music on her own and and I wasn't going to push her to to force her to try to be a good student and then she became a student you know that she's she's a better student than I am I mean she's so incredibly intelligent and it's and it's so wonderful to see that and although she doesn't have a father influence in her life it's been amazing to see how she's blossomed and how there have been other men in her life who've stepped up and have kind of filled in for that, which has been great to see. And, and, you know, then it was pretty cool. I'm just going to say it was very cool to have Martha meet Paul Green. And for those two to connect like, like almost instantly. And they had this, there is this, it's like this creativity. In fact, sometimes I'll, I'll hear, Paul talking and think, no wonder it was just, it was, I was just watching something the other day that he, that he did. And I was like, no wonder these two got along so well. Paul just talks like Martha does. I mean, there's so, because <laughs> yes. there's this creativity. There was this, there was this thing he would, he had some phrase. I'm like, Martha would say that. And then I remember Martha, after she met him, Martha was going around saying, oh, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking like Paul. I'm thinking like Paul. <laughs> and it was just, and it was just a few days that she spent with him just a little bit of interaction but it was so great to see that it, that she was she was actually working for him I mean that was something like I'm the executive assistant and then I see her and I remember her coming to me and saying I got to be you is what she said <laughs> it was so funny when she said that and so it's just been it's just been such a joy mm. to see to see her just blossom and really be and really become such such an such an incredible young adult a young woman and and just so confident and and to to know that yes I've had you know that and to know to recognize that yes I had a part in that I'm not going to say that it's all me I would never say that but I know because of the way that I did intentionally choose to parent her that I'm reaping the benefits. And then, and, and thankfully God bless me. It was just a wonderful child. Well, and even the way you speak about that, it's so clear that you love her so completely that you allow her to find her way on her own with your gentle love, your guidance, but you're not strong arming it. You're letting there be a freedom there that a lot of people aren't able to do because there's a true trust that you have in her and have in yourself that you have given her those tools and surrounded her with a love of God and a love of family and friendship and connection and her own passions that you trust her as a young woman. And that is rare. And that's just so incredible to see. So thank you for that insight. Um, finally, to close it out, and this is kind of a two-parter. Um, I want to know what's next for Ruth Hill. And in the spirit of who I'm interviewing, I know that there is something in this interview that you were like, oh, I wish she would ask me this that I haven't asked. So share something that, you're such a great interviewer. I want to know what's next for you. And then I want to know for you to close it out with the question that you would have asked. And then I want you to answer it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it, does. it does. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, what's next for me is um, 
I have been able to do some work with uh, Rama Drama Live, and they have a convention coming up in January in Florida, West Palm Beach. So I'm excited about that. And so I will be involved with that. It's still it's still one of those things that we're not, all the pieces aren't all filled in yet, but that will be happening in January. But before that, um, I am planning on coming to uh, with Paul to Christmas convention in New Jersey. So that will be something I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, and still, still details to work out with all of that, but, but I am planning on that. Um, what some of the things that Paul and I are currently working on that I have a part in actually a huge part in there. He does have a book that he's been working on for as long as I've known him. He's had a book that he's, so that's been a few years now. And it was my initiative that finally said, come on, let's actually do this. And so we are working on that. And it's been, it's been really quite something because I didn't think that I never could have seen myself as being like, he does all the talking, I record it, I transcribe it, and I try to make some sense of it. And, and it's going to be a really good book. Actually, the book is called 52 Ways to Be the Dad You Wish You Had. And it's really great. It is something that um, we talk with one publishing company who is very interested. And so I would say next year, it's going to be published. Um, by Father's Day. And so that's, I mean, and that's just, and we're already, I mean, that's already been thrown out there. You can actually go to his website and you'll see that there's a part that says 52 ways. If you click on it, there's like a countdown clock to next year's Father's Day. Because oh, I said, because I said, it's happening. I mean, it's like, it's going, you know, like it's happening. I'm making sure it's happening. And so that's something I'm heavily involved with as well. Um, I'm currently taking this business marketing course as going or class. I'm, of course, I'm going for I'm going for an associate in business marketing, but I'm probably going to increase that. Should say probably I am going to increase that to going for a bachelor's. Although I have, already have a bachelor's in music, I'm now I, I I will be switching it over once I get my associate's degree. Then I'm just going to say, well, let's go for a bachelor's because I'm really enjoying getting into the business aspect of things. And so there'll be a, so, so there's definitely that. Um, I am looking at, you know, the possibility of maybe doing a, doing some kind of podcast with, with, with a good friend of mine. <laughs> um, so that's, that's, that's also the works. And, and I think that you'll be seeing me doing some promotions with um, this rebranded network, GAC. I don't know how all that's going to work, but I'm definitely, no matter what happens, I'm definitely promoting them. I mean, I, I I think that I think that they just about broke the internet with all of their news, um, you know, recently. Um, <laughs> I think there might be some truth to that with all of their news, which I'm just so excited to keep reading all this news and and I'm so excited to see what's going to go on with that network and how I can promote stuff and you know just but for but so for for me those are all like things that I'm focusing on. Uh, Paul has a new album coming out, so I'll be heavily involved in mar marketing that as well. And I know a lot of the things I'm wrapped up with Paul, that's because he's, he's he, I'm very passionate about what he's doing. But that those things are really the big things for me. Um, I, I mean, right now, I am in the midst of, um, and I'm not sure when we'll release this, but, but I can just say that I'm in the, on this day, I'm day five of the of a ten day detox that I'm involved in, and finally feeling better. I was it was really rough, but it's been it has been worth the pain. It's been worth the <laughs> discomfort, and in the end, I'm going to be so much healthier. And you know, it's like I've already I've already I've already I've already down five pounds, which is amazing. Oh yeah, which is amazing because I didn't really necessarily need to lose any more weight or anything, yeah. but, but it's been really great. It's been, it's been, it's been amazing. And I'm, and I'm excited to see where this goes. It's, it's been, it's been a great thing. Um, so th those are the things that I am, that I'm looking towards the future. I mean, there's lots of things that I have big dreams, big goals out there 
for things in the future that I haven't quite figured everything out. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, my, 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 my big goal for Paul is that there, that he'll have a world tour and I will help organize it. That's something that I've already decided is going to happen. And I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but we're, you know, it's going to happen. I, I have no doubt. You know, some, some kind of world. I don't know what exactly the world entails, but I do know it'll be beyond just North America. I mean, I think North America is great, but let's get out there. And, and the, so. that is something that is so incredible about you, Ruth, is that when you start something, and I'm just so on board with this, now knowing you from even a year and a half ago, you just know that starting is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And that no matter what it is or what it looks like or what it grows into, you are confident that it will blossom and grow into something beautiful or something that'll be what it is. Mm -hmm. But again, going back to that, you live in freedom and not fear anymore. You are able to just take on all these exciting things. Like, Drama drama and Christmas con and promotions and podcasts and yeah. organizing all of these things and still being someone who is able to be a wonderful mom, friend, daughter, human being, daughter in Christ. Like you are able to encompass so many things and you truly have this beautiful life well lived. So if there's, if there's something you want to share though, at the end, I want to make sure that I asked everything that you would have asked because I've learned from you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. That's so, so kind of you to say all those things, but uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, well, we didn't touch a lot of my music, so let me just circle back and, and I'll just fill in with what, what's going on as far as musically speaking, how that's come about. And I'll just spend a little bit of time on that. Um, what happened with music for me, um, I did go on to be a music teacher. I got a music degree when I'd be a music teacher. And voice, I, I have a classically trained voice. And so that was a good thing in many circles, but it began to be a bit of a liability. At least that's how I felt. I felt this well, people would speak negatively of, oh, your voice is too powerful, it's too strong, it's too, you know, you sound like opera singer, blah, 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 and all these different things. And so I began to just say, okay, I'm done with singing. You know, I'm just, I'll sing for myself. But I mean, even, so, even sometimes my family members were not on board with it. Um, some of my uh, other family, more distant, I don't mean close family, but just they would kind of be like, ah, it's worth singing, it's worth singing again. And... <laughs> And so I really tended to draw back from it. When I went to Carnegie Hall back in uh, December, 2019, and I watched that concert, Paul was a part of that concert and I watched the concert. It really reignited the spark within me to want to do more singing. And I didn't know what that meant. I remember telling Paul about it and Paul said, well, just don't, don't think about it, just create. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that because it's so easy to sit around and just think and think and think and talk about it and you're going to do it but not do anything about it. And so it was a few months later where, well, I, I think it's actually because of the pandemic, I finally jumped in and said, okay, I'm going to just put, some, put a song out there on YouTube. So I put a song out there. I remember I shared it with Paul. I was a little bit nervous sharing it with him because he had never really heard me sing. And he's like, oh, wow, you have a really powerful voice. He said, would you like to take voice lessons? Not that you need them, but would you like, and it was so weird. I thought, huh, I haven't taken voice lessons in so many years. Sure, I've, sure let's jump in. I, I, mean, I mean, I could not, I almost couldn't believe I was doing this, but I thought, sure, I'm a, it's a pandemic. I'm not doing anything. And so, he got me hooked up with his, his voice teacher. It's all done online. And as a result of working with this guy now for over a year, 
it's really changed um, my voice in a lot of good ways. He, we've really worked to not make it always sound so classical. And I know I haven't released anything on YouTube recently. I've been a little bit busy, but, um, but um, what was really something, in fact, I'll tell you one of the most interesting things, and I, and I don't think, I don't think Paul realizes how much this meant to me and to his voice teacher, because since, since, since he's also Paul's voice teacher, once in a while, they talk about me or we talk about Paul or whatever the case is. And I asked Paul a few weeks ago, I said, okay, I'm supposed to pick another song for my voice lesson. What song would you have me sing? And I was a little bit nervous doing it. I'll be honest. I was nervous, but I'm like, nope, I'm just going to ask him. And he came back and said, well, why don't you try the song Respect, Aretha Franklin? I'm like, okay, sure. I never would have thought of that. And so I tell my voice teacher, I'm singing Respect, Aretha Franklin. I think he was, he was like, oh, okay. I would never have chosen that for you. <laughs> and I literally blew my voice teacher away because oh, I love that. Uh, and I mean, it was incredible. My mom was kind of like, I know you sing it well. It's not my favorite song of yours, but I know you sing, <laughs> I know you sing it well. It's not quite her style, but she could hear that I'm singing it well. And it was just, it was just the other day, my last voice uh, lesson that my voice teacher said, I'm so glad Paul suggested this because I never would have picked, picked this for you and just have you, you know, break out of your comfort zone, do something different. And so that has been such a great thing. My, it, it's kind of like the, my voice lessons, even though I don't always get a chance to perform, my voice lessons is kind of like the time when I get to do something just for me. I used to have to make it that, well, I have to do something with this. If I'm going to take lessons, I have to do something with it. And if I'm not doing something with it, I can't, I, I, I'm not going to keep doing it. Well, it's for me. And so I don't have to go, it's not like I have to go perform and be some big time singer on the stage. Cause that's not really where my focus is now, but it's something that makes me feel really good when I get to, when I get a chance to sing and, and even just in the voice lessons, even just the weekly voice lessons, it's fun to just get this chance to sing and, and to, to play around and do some different things. I love you. So I think this is the perfect way to end out because you just said something that to me is so profound about the fact that I think someone like you who does give so much to other people, finally having that realization that it doesn't have to be about what am I going to do with this? how is this going to fit into what I'm giving to someone else and sharing it? I mean, all that's wonderful. I've heard you sing. It's mm -hmm. made me happy. It's made my day better. It connects you more deeply with people. That is all well and good. However, even if you weren't doing that, it is enough that you get to do something that is for yourself. And there's so much beauty in that and then when you do choose to share that with other people we are blessed that you do that with us but if you choose not to there's still a lot of value in it so i i just say Ruth, this has been so wonderful for me thank you for giving me this opportunity i can't wait to continue our friendship and collaborations and then even just the things that are just hanging out when we I get when you come to New York City I'll get to see you yeah and I'll get to see you for Christmas con and I'm yeah. just so looking forward to our shared adventures and thank you again for letting us have an insight and sorry I just clinked my water glass I was right. getting too exciting then thank you for letting us have some insight into you we've really been wanting that and we're so grateful that you took the time. Well, Jack, thank you for, for suggesting this, for inviting me to, to be interviewed by you. And thank you for asking such incredible questions. 
Well, I've been an avid follower of you for quite some time now. So I know how a Ruthful interview works. So I, I did my homework. Um, yeah. But thank you for saying that. And I can't wait to talk.